Hi students, welcome to your 12 chemistry and module 5 equilibrium and acid reactions. This is video number 13 and we're going to be looking at the effect of temperature on the equilibrium constant. At the end of the last video we were having a look at what sort of qualitative information we can get from the value of K. So when the value of K is very large then we know that the position of equilibrium lies far to the right, that it favours the products. Uh, and when the K value is very small, that it lies to the left and favours the reactants. So um, we've also looked at the fact that we can shift the equilibrium by um, adding or changing some aspect of the uh, equilibrium conditions. And according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will then shift in order to counteract the change. Now, what that will do is to try and return the equilibrium system to the original position, to try and shift it back in order to try and re-establish that value of K. We can now look at it mathematically, quantitatively, and say if the value of K was um, 2.4, and we shifted the equilibrium in such a way as to drop that value, then we know that the equilibrium will therefore shift in, in order to try and raise that value back to 2.4 and by doing so, shift it to the right to produce more product. Now that works fine for all of the variables that we've looked at that affect the, the equilibrium systems, except for one, and that one is temperature. So here is an equation which represents the Haber process. The Haber process is uh, a, a chemical reaction which is designed to produce ammonium. It's a, a synthesis reaction, ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen, according to this equation. So what we have here is one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen producing two moles of ammonia. The delta H value or the enthalpy change is negative. This is telling us that this is an exothermic reaction. Now, if we remember that our calculation of the equilibrium constant can be um, remembered using the acronym PORC, then we know that the equilibrium constant in this case will be the concentration of the products, which is NH3 raised to the power of two divided by N2 multiplied by H2 raised to the power of 3. This is the expression for the equilibrium constant. But if we had this in a closed vessel, so therefore no matter was going to be introduced nor escape from the system, we um, were able to ensure that the uh, volume was fixed. So there was no change in the volume, no change in the pressure, no change in the concentration of any of the individual components. And of course, we um, were neither adding nor subtracting anything to this. Um, then what would be the effect of an increase in temperature? Well, what we've said from our discussion so far is that an increase in temperature will increase the kinetic energy of all of the particles, so the reaction rates would increase. But because this is an exothermic reaction, the um, extra energy is given out, so we can consider that we have energy as a product of this reaction. If we therefore increase the temperature, we're adding more energy to the system, and the system, according to Le Chatelier, will shift, let's make it green, will shift to uh, the left. It will favour the formation of the reactants. So what is that going to do to our equilibrium constant? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to make this part of our uh, function larger and this part here smaller. If that happens, the value of the equilibrium constant is going to uh, decrease. This is the only factor that's actually going to change the number. The, the value of the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. And that's why you will always see examples, hopefully you'll always see examples when you're calculating the equilibrium constant where the temperature is actually given. Not necessarily that you need to use that in any of your calculations, but it is a requirement for 
uh, equilibrium that we specify the temperature because we know that that equilibrium constant will change at different temperatures. So I guess to look at this in just a little bit more detail, expand on it a bit, when we decrease the temperature, if the reaction that we have is an exothermic reaction and therefore energy is a product, then when we decrease the energy, we are re uh, decrease the temperature, we are reducing the energy of the system. So therefore, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system shifts. in order to counteract that change. So if we drop the temperature, we reduce the energy, the shift is to increase the energy, and that means that this will go to the right. So therefore, a shift to exothermic process. And in the uh, example that we have above, the value of K would increase because we're increasing the concentration of the products. Likewise, if we increase the temperature, we are uh, increasing the energy of the system. Le Chatelier's principle says that the system will shift in order to counter that, shift to the side with uh, lower energy to, to take away that energy, uh, and that means a shift to um, the uh, endothermic process, which will uh, use up that excess energy. Well, use up that sort of thing. And in the in the one that I have above, obviously the K value uh, will therefore drop because if it's going to the um, left, it's going to be um, uh, increasing the concentration of the reactants and decreasing the concentration of the products. So takeaway message, the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent and you will be given the value of the temperature and uh, any shift in the, uh, any change in the temperature of the system will shift that system to favour the exothermic reaction if we drop the temperature in order to um, release more energy or it will shift to the side that is endothermic when we increase the temperature in order to um, absorb that excess energy. Again, a few practice questions and I'm sure this will all become clear. Thanks for watching.